Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Shelly's Millions. In today's video, I want to talk about what exactly are the requirements to be eligible to receive FED-ED, as it's called in California, or EB, Extended Benefits, as it's called in other states, and what happens if you don't qualify for FED-ED. So if that's information you're interested in, please make sure and stick around and watch this video to the end. I appreciate all of you for subscribing and for trusting me to give you good information on the unemployment situation. If you haven't already, please take a moment and like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any other unemployment updates. So first, let me tell you a little bit about what the FED-ED or Extended Benefits EB program is. This is a, an extension that, depending on your state, can last up to 20 weeks. It kicks in or triggers on when a state has an unemployment level of above 6% or above 5% with an increase of more than 20% the unemployment rate average over the previous two years. This extension kicks in after the PEUC extension. That PEUC extension was part of the CARES Act, and so it's set to expire really the week ending December 26th because that's how most unemployment offices calculate the work week but as it's written, December 31st. So this extension kicks in whenever you run out of the PEUC extension if you qualify. The qualifications are the same regardless of what state you're in, but how they roll the program out may be different depending on what state you're in. Here in California, the and for all the states, these are the requirements. You need to meet one of these two methods for calculating if you're eligible or not. And if you have it handy, you might want to go grab your original unemployment award benefit letter if you have that still. So the first way to calculate is you take your weekly benefit amount and multiply that by 40. So for me, my weekly benefit amount is $450. So I'm going to take 450 times 40, which gives me $18,000. If I made more than $18,000 in my entire base period um, year that they use to calculate my original benefit amount, then I qualify for Fed ED here in California, um, or EB in, your, in whatever state you're in. So I did make more than $18,000 that that in that base period, so I will qualify for Fed ED. Now, if you do that, that multiplication, if you take your weekly benefit amount and you multiply that by 40, and you made more than that in your base period that they use to calculate your, your benefit amount, then you don't even need to do this step, the second way that you can meet the, the requirement to be eligible. And the second method is, you find your highest quarter earnings and multiply that by 1.5. Now I found um, just like an example on the internet that I'll screenshot above as we go through it and we'll calculate that for them. Now it is important to note that with them, um, with this example, they actually would qualify if you take their benefit amount and multiply it by 40. They would, they would qualify on that alone, but let's use this to do the math for the second method. So their highest quarter was $9,641.68. Then you multiply that by 1.5, which gives you $14,462.52. So they needed to make more than that to qualify which they did, and that's listed on item number five on that screenshot. So the next step is that you're going to get an award letter, either telling you that you were approved for FED-ED 
or denied fed ed and here's where the process could be different depending on what state you live in so this will be a little bit specific to california although most states generally tend to work in a similar way but but this is just for california on exactly how it works for us so you get that letter and if they say that you qualify then that's it you don't need to do anything if they say that you don't qualify that doesn't necessarily mean that all help hope is lost if you get the award letter and it says that you don't qualify for fed ed you can't really appeal it because it's based on on just the sheer numbers unless for some reason the edd didn't have some of your earnings or they didn't have all of your wages then maybe you could appeal it but but otherwise you're not it's there's not really a point to try and appeal it because it's based on the numbers off of your award letter and you have to meet one of those two qualifications either 40 times your weekly benefit amount or 1.5 times at least your highest earnings quarter from that award letter and if you don't meet those qualifications there's not really a way that they can waive that for you if you don't qualify for fed ed uh, here in California, they will, they're will they supposed to automatically enroll you into a PUA claim. But I've been hearing more and more that you actually need to call and follow up with the EDD if you get a denial letter for Fed ED. And so what I'd recommend doing is maybe waiting a few business days after you get the letter telling you you were denied Fed ED and then I would give them a call and I would just say, hi, I just got my letter denying me for Fed ED and it's my understanding that you're automatically going to enroll me onto a PUA claim. Is that true? Is there anything you need from me in order to make sure that that process happens quickly? Hopefully after that they say, no, we've got you enrolled and you're just gonna continue certifying like usual under PUA. Now PUA, you do need to fill out additional paperwork or questionnaire that lets them know that the reason why you're currently unemployed is due to a pandemic related reason. But I'm pretty sure that's why all of us are still unemployed right now. So just make sure that you answer that the reason why you're currently unemployed is due to a pandemic related reason. Unfortunately, the PUA program is set to expire December 31st. That was part of the CARES Act and people that are on PUA claims that was something new that they introduced just this year with the CARES Act and it was designed to be temporary. I am hoping that when Congress passes a bill that they do look at that and that they extend the expiration date on both the PUA program and the PEUC program. Uh, that's the 13 week extension, but that is also set to expire December 31st unless Congress votes on a bill that extends both of those programs. Extended benefits and Fed ED, those programs don't have a specific expiration date. Those programs are available as long as the state's unemployment level is 6% or higher. So right now the unemployment rate here in California is really high, so I do not anticipate that program going away anytime soon. All right, everyone, and if you have been able to set some money inside and you're interested in investing some of it to try and build your wealth, even though we're on unemployment, you can still try and build your wealth while you're unemployed and you'd like to try putting some of your money into the stock market, I do like the stock trading app Webull. You actually don't even really have to use your own money in the stock market. You do need to make an initial deposit of $100 on the platform, and if you do that, they'll give you one free stock valued up to $1,600 when you use my link in the description down below. Let me know in the comments which free stock you got. Um, 
And then you can just transfer your original $100 right back into your bank account and just watch what your free stock does. That kind of gives you an introductory taste into the stock market. You know, your stocks will go up some days, it'll go down some days. So that's really what I recommend doing with Weeble at this point, is just making the deposit to get your stock and then watching that stock for a while to see what it does and put your own money right back into your bank account. So. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching Shelly's Millions. I'll see you next time.